Hello everyone, in this video let us talk about uh, some best practices when it comes to using uh, Jira cloud automation. Now I was thinking of uh, talking about uh, five best practices and I was making a list but I ended up making a list of uh, 10 which is I think uh, a good news because in case you want to learn automation rules or in case you are thinking of using automation rules uh, or if you are maybe not sure whether you should be using automation rules or not then hopefully this video will help you and the reason i'm talking about the best practices is because uh, automation can be very powerful and uh, it can do a lot of uh, wonderful things for you but at the same time uh, you need to be careful about uh, what kind of automation or to what extent you uh, want to do automation in your Jira instance. Now, talking about uh, the, f the first best practice, the first item that I have in my list is uh, limit the scope of your automation rule. Now, when you define, uh, let us say, a rule, you have the option to also use a condition or maybe you can use uh, a project specific uh, rule. So, when you are running those automation rules, be aware of uh, the scope will that particular trigger be applicable for all the issues in your jira instance maybe you have hundreds of users doing something maybe you have a, a trigger like uh, in progress like do something when the issue is moved to in progress status now it can be for thousands of issues but you need to be careful when you define the rule uh, and when you configure the trigger you can also maybe add a condition and uh, make sure the scope is limited don't really uh, keep your scope too wide and there is also one more point related to scope which i will talk about uh, in few minutes number two use the log action now when you configure a rule you also have the option to uh, basically print something to the log and there is a log that you can take a look at and whenever you uh, are trying to understand how rule will behave or how rule is working you always have the option to print something to the log uh, maybe you want to print uh, the smart values or maybe you want to print uh, some intermediate uh, uh, field fields value that you think will be used in your rule so anything that you want to print it could be just uh, a text a static text or it could be uh, some value that will be uh, calculated or generated so you can always print it to the log and I think uh, when you are trying to configure the rules or maybe if you're trying to understand how a rule is behaving or maybe you have to troubleshoot your rules then uh, the log action will definitely be very helpful point number three is uh, monitoring the performance now I talked about uh, this uh, in one of my previous video you have the option to monitor the performance of all the rules in your uh, Jira instance. Now, this is very important because when you have rules, when, when you have a lot of automation rules configured, some of those rules can take uh, a lot of time to complete the execution. And I think uh, you should monitor those rules. You should keep an eye on uh, rules that are taking maybe more than uh, 30 seconds or maybe a minute. I think that is a bit too much and um, if you have those rules that that are taking uh, too much time then uh, it means that it can slow down the work or whatever you expect those rules to do to your issues or whatever you want to do in your Jira instance so do monitor the rule uh, rules performances of basically all the rules uh, point number four is keep it simple of course uh, this is related to the above point performance if you, have, if you have rules that are not very complicated, I mean, I'm not really saying that keep it too simple, uh, do whatever you want to do, but of course, uh, within limits, don't really uh, try to create a rule with like 50 components. I think that is a bit too much. Uh, I don't really have a specific number, like you should not have more than five or 10 components, but I think as long as uh, you're able to go back to your rule after five months, six months, and you're able to understand, okay, this is the rule which is doing this thing, and these are all the components, these are all the conditions, and uh, this will be triggered by this particular uh, event in Jira, and uh, this is the actual outcome of this rule. 
so you should be able to understand it you should be able to modify it easily without uh, spending half an hour on understanding yourself how this rule will work so keep it simple so that uh, you 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 can keep your life uh, simple and uh, it will it will definitely be uh, useful if you are a Jira administrator who is uh, responsible for uh, these rules. Now talking about uh, administration of these rules, if uh, let us say you are responsible for uh, uh, for a Jira instance where you have a lot of automations, then having some kind of a nomenclature I think is really important for these rules. So don't try to create rules with random names or names that make no sense at all. Use some kind of a uh, nomenclature like uh, start the rule name with uh, the trigger and somewhere in the rule mention very briefly what this rule is uh, doing. Like for example, uh, if the rule is adding a comment on a linked issue, so just make the rule with this name like add comment on linked issue something like that and also use the description uh, from a very early stages of my Jira journey I have been talking about uh, using a proper nomenclature some kind of a nomenclature in your Jira instance for your schemes also and always use the description because uh, uh, although I also recommend you to maintain a document of whatever configurations you have but I understand maintaining a documentation is not always possible and feasible uh, so in that case at least use proper names and use the description that is also applicable for your rule names and uh, point number six is uh, back up your rules so there is an there's an option in uh, in your uh, Jira automation rules where you can export those rules uh, and I personally prefer exporting all of them uh, individually because I can then save them somewhere on my local com computer and I also version control them which is always good to have so that if your rule is working today but it was not working uh, maybe it, it, is, it, it stopped working and you are not really sure about what what is the change or maybe it is misbehaving for example so if you have the version history you can always go back to the previous version so back backup of your rules point number seven so using automation rules you can create automations you can do wonderful things without writing any code uh, and things are very straightforward you just uh, use those uh, components and configure the conditions actions and you have everything in front of you, the in, in front of you you have a proper ui where you can uh, simply select what you want to do but i think if you learn smart values then uh, if you if you understand how these smart values work then I think you can uh, take your automation to the next level and you can basically get the most out of these uh, automation rules now when you compare automation rules with uh, a tool like uh, script now for Jira of course there is no there is no comparison I mean uh, you can't really compare uh, automations or uh, the kind of business logic that you can achieve by writing your own uh, script but at the same time even without writing any script even with just using automation rules uh, if you know smart values you can you can get the most out of out of your rules and i have talked about in almost all of my videos how to use uh, smart values i have given you a lot of examples so also take a look at my videos now point number eight something similar to smart values if you can learn a bit of uh, regular expressions then you will be able to achieve the ultimate uh, uh, automation using uh, automation rules uh, let me give you a very simple example let us say you receive tickets via email uh, Jira service management for example you have uh, uh, people your customers sending an email and when people send you e send you those emails they just uh, uh, mention the email uh, I mean they just send you email with a body and a subject that is it but you may want to capture some keywords from the description for example if your uh, customers are using some kind of let us say text like urgent not working asap or maybe maybe you have uh, a tool which is sending you an email with uh, some uh, values like like server id for example you can basically write uh, those rules uh, with the help of uh, regular expressions to 
pass your body your uh, email body and pick up those values and maybe update a custom field so basically you can do rerouting of your tickets uh, and if you know how to use smart values along with the regular expressions then you can do wonderful things with your with your rules now point number nine now i, I talked about this in uh, in one of my recent videos and i think i can probably talk about it very briefly now we also have the option to do something when uh, you have workflows using post functions now when you have the option to use a, po a post function like do something when the transition has happened you can of course uh, configure a post function and post, post functions will follow some kind of uh, an order because uh, that is how post functions work the advantage of using automation rules using um, some kind of a listener basically when you configure a rule you can uh, configure the rule to uh, be triggered by a transition for example or some field value change it could be anything the advantage of using automation rule is number one those rules are outside your workflow so you always i mean if you have a workflow you can of course modify the post functions but you, but you have to go to the workflow then you have to modify the uh, you have to go to the, go to the post function it, it is a bit of a pain uh, to to modify a post function so in those cases uh, using uh, using automation rules uh, makes much more sense in case you don't really worry about the order in which those rules uh, in, in 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 which order you want those uh, things to happen and the final uh, point is uh, learn webhooks and uh, also learn rest api now when you have web webhooks you can basically configure those uh, you can basically run those rules out from outside jira uh, maybe you have a separate tool and you want to do something in jira so you have the option to use webhooks and i talked about it in one of my video on automation at the same time if you want to do something outside jira or maybe within jira using uh, jira's own internal rest api so you always have the option to use rest api to do something outside uh, outside your jira instance and uh, uh, there, there is an option to basically call an endpoint so these are like my 10 points you can treat them as a best practice or you can uh, treat them as uh, things that you should be aware of when you are uh, trying to get the most out of your uh, automation rules and uh, that is what i was thinking of sharing with all of you today so i hope you found this video useful and you also learned something new today thank you very much